Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 139 of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Barry, and with me this week, because Swan is taking the week off, it's Curtis. Curtis, welcome back to the show, buddy. It's been like a, lo- a lot. It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Oh, yeah. It's good to be back. Yeah, give give everybody an update. How have you been? Get, give us a, a week by week, day by day playback. Okay, of yeah. How- so I woke up <laughs> about five. <laughs> um, no, no, nothing really. Just been hanging out and you know staying safe and heck yeah, man. Just uh, going to work, and doing <laughs> doing normal daily things. Are you are you actually going? You're you're still working for Keeneland, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, still am. So you're still working from home then. Yeah, so I am uh, working remotely now, yeah, yeah. permanently. So, mm. uh, yeah, so I'll be Good be for working you, from home. Thanks. Been working from home, and uh, we'll continue to do that. Well, this was fun. Um, I went to the Party Source in Covington. Nice. Which is apparently the largest liquor store in the world. In the world, or at least in, oh. the, in the U.S. In the U.S. <laughs> I did not realize that that was the case. I always thought that it was just a real big one. <laughs> no, apparently it's the it's largest in the U.S. <laughs> so they claim. I don't know if that's really um, self-proclaimed or just <laughs> actual facts. But to say nobody, yeah. nobody fact check us on that one because yeah. we can't even fact check ourselves. <laughs> well, that's what they can't even fact check themselves. Apparently, so that's true. That but is true. Anyway, it's really cool. It's pretty nice. I don't know. I'm sounds like you've been. I have been. I've been once. Yeah. Um, and I, it's it's been it's been about a year and a half since I've been there. Maybe a little bit more. I honestly can't remember for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but on my way back, here's the the only reason I remember that I've even gone, um, is because I was I was doing a a a couple of days on a commercial shoot up in northern kentucky it was actually in covington and on my way back i was like oh, i'll do a little bit of, of bourbon hunting i stopped at the uh at the party source and like that was it um and this is when we were still living in richmond i might have talked this on uh, talked about this on the podcast uh mm-hmm. before i can't remember but anyway so i got about maybe half a mile away from our exit to to get to our house in richmond Mm -hmm. and um my my water pump in my car broke uh Uh, and something something else went out i can't remember exactly what it was it might have been the timing belt i don't know but so i i broke down on i-75 and i've had to pull my car to the interior uh shoulder and I was there for a solid like hour and a half. Yeah. Did you just crack open the Elijah Craig you had or something? Like no, I didn't. Screw it. I, <laughs> I don't think I even picked anything up when I went. I think oh, okay. I just was like, uh, I, I I just you know looked around and just was looked like, around. That's yeah. I was like, there's just nothing here that I I want to pick it's up. A, so it's a nice store, but just you're not so going to be. Much. It has so much and, you know, it's just, you're not going to, it's not one of those places like you're going to find some really great stuff probably. No, not necessarily. They might have some releases and stuff. Sure. But yeah, you're not. Or like some, uh, some picks or something. Yeah. Yeah. But even, even then I think I was just like, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Anyway, still, still fun. Little fun. Party source. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Party source. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey, uh, for those of you who are patrons of the show, this week you're actually going to be getting a video edition of this week's episode. That is due to the fact, of course, that Swan is not here. Curtis and I are recording remotely, as Curtis is all the way in Cincinnati, of course. And uh, due to that as well, we really don't have a a flying blind uh, for this week. I haven't, I haven't been able to send Curtis uh, any samples yet, but... I, I I apologize that I haven't been able to to send much to you. We need to do that just so we can have you have you more regularly. But I will say that next week, I have not even told you this yet, Curtis. This is the first time I'm I'm mentioning this on the show because it just kind of 
uh, got set up over the past few days. Next week, we are going to have a very special guest on the podcast. That's cool. And I am really, really excited about it. He is the host of one of my favorite shows on the Travel Channel. No way. Booze Traveler. Really? Yeah, Jack Maxwell is going to be on the show. That's awesome, man. That's super exciting. Yeah, so I reached out to him back in March and I, I just, we, we never really followed up because it was as soon as uh, coronavirus hit and I, you know, things just got crazy for a little while. And, and I was like, well, he'll, he'll get back to me eventually. And then I think it was Wednesday night. Uh, I was finishing up some editing. I was like, you know, I haven't heard anything back from Jack. Let me send him a follow-up email. And I did, and he sent me one back the day after and said, yeah, absolutely, let's do it. Um, so I got some some samples sent out to him, a um, couple of other goodies from Kentucky. And uh, this week, at, so the Wednesday of recording, I'm going to be doing an interview with him, talking about uh, not, not just his experience with Booze Traveler, but just, you know, who he is as a as a person he's been dealing with some medical issues over the past few years as well just a really really fascinating person and and one of my favorite shows that 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 i've watched especially in this capacity so i i I cannot wait to have jack on next week it's kind of he's kind of been one of those like ever since we started the show uh one of those people that i really just was like oh this would be kind of a dream guest to to have on um and so yeah we're gonna be recording it via zoom much like we are for for this week's episode so you guys on on patreon at the very least um are going to be getting that that video content and uh there there might be the chance that i'll push that to uh to the public as well it just kind of depends on uh on what i think we'll see though it's all it's all very kind of nebulous at the moment i'm still also kind of reeling from the fact that i got to see my baby's face for the first time today so (laughs) i'm wearing my girl dad hat too so which was a birthday present from lucy and uh so yeah man i there's a lot of cool things happening we also have uh, some more pretty special guests that are coming up in the near future that I'm not gonna not gonna spoil just yet because I, I don't want to jinx it as everything's kind of shifting and getting put into place in the right way. Uh, but I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. But before we we get to that, uh, we do have we have a whole episode. We haven't even hardly started this episode. But uh, we as we normally do, I want to ask you, Curtis, what have you been drinking recently? What have I been drinking? What have you been drinking? Uh, well, let <laughs> me think he, about as he it looks this off weekend. Into the middle distance. Yeah, uh, let me think about it. I had quite a bit of bourbon this weekend. <laughs> um, Henry McKenna ten year. Uh, that was you know the single barrel. That's a standard for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also was having Four Roses Small Batch Select, so I've been having some of that. And as of right now, I am drinking actually. Uh, the Rebel Yell tenure. Nice. I saw yeah. some. We we went to the uh, the Luxro Distillery this weekend uh, for my birthday, and um, they had some. They had some there. I okay. was really I was really surprised to see it. I, I don't normally see see it in person very often, but uh, mm-hmm. there there it was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the only reason I'm getting to is uh, it was leftover. It was a leftover sample bottle that I had actually from oh, Swan. No for my birthday. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. So, all the way from February, we're having the last of it. <laughs> well, I uh, have I've had a lot I had a lot of stuff um over the past few days. Friday was my my birthday. Um and uh, my my buddy Travis Gintz from Texas, also of course known as uh Cletus <laughs> sent me a decanter for my birthday. Uh, it was a, an 11-year-old Jim Beam bottled in bond from 1979. Wow. It's stupid good. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, 
I had that. I I bought the new Wild Turkey Masters Keep, the bottled and bond, kind of as my little birthday present to myself. Cracked that open on my birthday. Uh, shoot. What else? I've had a Russell single barrel that I've really been enjoying. I got a couple of new riff picks recently, too, from Kentucky Supply and Demand. Uh, one of my local groups. They've been on the show before, of course. Picked up the old Ezra 7. Got a little too uh, little too excited about pulling that one out of the bottle. <laughs> um, I haven't had the old Ezra 7 barrel proof in forever. And they had it at the Lux Road Distillery. And I was like, I have gonna get, I'm going to get a bottle. I'm going to get a bottle of it. And hold on, hold on. Ah, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm good now. I don't. I remember liking it more than I do now, which is odd. I mean, like it's still good, but there's something about it that I'm not. It's just not sitting as well with me. But yeah, I don't know. I, I might have to do like a like a, a like touch on everything that I had uh, for my birthday. I, on this week's live stream oh i know another okay this is really cool so dad and i i had this on my birthday um it's a it was a mini bottle of knob creek the small batch age stated nine year i uh, this was actually from the first year of knob creek being bottled which was 93 ah. so birth year bottle and first year for Knob Creek being bottled. Which, How was that uh, one? It was really good. I, I I was super, super happy with it. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't have a whole lot of dusty funk to it or anything. It just kind of seemed to be pretty, pretty clean. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. I liked it a lot. I had a, I had a lot of good stuff uh, over the, the, the birthday weekend. We went to... Like I was saying, a few distilleries as well. Um, we went to Lux Row, 1792, Heaven Hill, and Preservation. All four of which were fantastic. Heaven Hill, as always, delivers and is great. Yep. So, yeah. Anyway. I still haven't been to Heaven Hill, actually. I would actually wait a little bit to go to Heaven Hill because they are still in the middle of their renovations that were supposed mm. to be over or supposed to be finished with this year, rather. But of course, with COVID, they weren't able to, to get everything done as, as quickly as they had anticipated. So they're, they're still, I think they're going to try to get it done by next year, or they're hoping to have it done by next year. So uh, I, I would wait to, to actually go. There's, it, it's a beautiful new, new addition to the, to the distillery. I, I think that once it's all said and done, everybody needs to go check yeah. it out because it, it's it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal so with this being the the fourth episode out of the past four as we've been trying to do recently we're going to take a little break from the news we're going to take a little break from being more serious we did this four episodes ago when we did the blind flight from uh, bill of uh, beer lovers wisconsin and uh, we're, we're just going to kind of, we're going to take it a little bit more easy, talk about a couple of things, but nothing truly serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought it would be a good time for us to talk about something that we had been discussing, putting out for a long time. I mean, we, we've been talking about this, I don't know, since before Tanner left yeah, the show it's been a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so what we want to do is we want to talk about some of our favorite widely available bottles and th this is all just totally us kind of shooting the breeze coming up with some some different names and everything uh and and it's all just products that we enjoy we you know nobody's told us that we have to put these on on our list uh, by any means it's just uh you know things that things that we find to be of of the highest quality at least for 
you know, what, what we enjoy drinking. And I, I initially kind of said, you know, what we would split it up into is like favorite daily drinkers and favorite uh, widely available bottles. Because, you know, we, we talk about daily drinkers often enough to where people can kind of anticipate what we're going to say. Mm-hmm. But I think that, you know, there, there's also something to be said about things that you're maybe not drinking every day but are still easy to access. Sure. So, so that's kind of where I'm, I'm coming at uh, from this. I, I, of course, had a hard time narrowing down my, my daily drinkers. So I went with a couple. Uh, but Kurt, I'll let you go first if you want to, man. Yeah, sure. Uh, so a daily drinker of mine, that one's definitely going to be uh rare breed it's just i it's higher proof it's just a phenomenal product it's at a good price point and you can always find it you're never going to not see it you're always going to be able to find that bottle um and it's just a quality product that is high quality i think one of the highest quality out of oh, yeah. uh out of bottles that you can available, like find available. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had some that we've said that are sometimes in our, like near our top, like that we've had. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I definitely went with a fair breed. Uh, Do we want to keep going or do you want to talk about one? Yeah, I'll talk. We'll, we'll bounce back and forth. So like I was saying, my, my daily drinkers, I kind of have, I have a few that are really in rotation, but if you look at the two that I think I, I am more inclined to drink uh, than anything, I, of course, Elijah Craig. It's what I've said forever. Bourbon should taste like. We talked about it ad nauseum on last week's episode with the Toasted Barrel. Um, just, just how great that product is and, and how just as a solid foundation, um, Elijah Craig is just, it's incredible. I mean, it's a, yeah. it, it absolutely widely available, a really nice uh, a proof point to also spoiler alert. This was also on mine. So <laughs> we can knock two birds with one stone on that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of yeah. course. But it, it's, it, it's just hard not to put something that is of such a high caliber, uh, like, like Elijah Craig, on this list we we've also talked about it before i don't necessarily hate the fact that the age statement is gone um i do still have a soft spot of course for the 12 year old uh age stated bottles but i still think that the the small batch that they have right now really is just it's so good i, I think it's delicious i think it holds up well in a cocktail i think that it uh, it does just fine as a neat sipper even with the with a cube of ice or two i just think it's a very versatile bourbon i I think that elijah craig in general is one that people might sleep on a little bit Uh, i don't i don't normally see elijah craig small batch 94 proof hitting uh too many favorite lists uh even though people do do speak pretty highly of it of course yeah so you want you said that you had uh, Elijah Craig also. Sure. Yeah. This. I mean, for <laughs> literally the same reasons that you said, uh, mm-hmm. another one that I've been thinking about, uh, and we're going to drop down to the low shelf here. Um, is just JW Dan. JW same, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way with TW Samuels. It's not as widely available, but continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it's just a good product and you're only paying, I think it's $15 and that's $15 for a handle. Uh, yeah. You're not feeling bad about putting this in a drink and it's going to make a, a nice, you know, cocktail that you're, you're making. Mm-hmm. Um, and the perk of it as well is you can just have it on the rocks or just have it neat. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't have to have anything with it. Um, I think it's just a solid, you're not, you're not going to break the bank. I mean, not you it's just like those, it, it's like those folks at heaven who'll know what they're doing it's they really do <laughs> i swear <laughs> so i had that one on there yeah uh, 
I, I also had, uh, of course, Turkey 101. Yeah, on that mine. one won't be on mine. I but... know, I know, it won't be. I, I can't disagree, of course, with Rare Breed uh, on your list, and it's one that I think, I think, kind of sits maybe not on my daily drinker list, but up towards my widely available, a um, little bit higher price range category list um for something that i would reach for sure um but again kind of back to daily drinkers you know one of the things that we always like to talk about is what is the best value in weeders Mm because there aren't a whole lot out there and the ones that are out there usually seem to be pretty divisive in the community and this this one actually and and by the way I, i don't think we ever really talked about this um the, none of these are really ranked. This is just kind of a, you know, a back and forth discussion. I would say. Yeah, this is definitely just a, you know, what are, <laughs> what are your favorites? We're not listing here. Yeah. We're just listing off names yeah, here. Exactly. But I actually would put, and, and this is one that I would, I would like to do a more in depth analysis of, maybe with a, a, a blind flight or something. But I had kind of a, a. a tie between larceny and uh rebel yell 100 dude you were <laughs> you're nailing them on the head man literally that's what i i, I was like all right here we go larceny in the back <laughs> Lars, larceny is just i think it's it's easily the it's the most accessible and probably the best deal in in weeders out there mm-hmm. so 25 ish dollars uh maybe closer to 22 uh across the board eight years old at minimum usually in 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 its batch uh 92 proof it's a higher proof and and slightly older than than maker's mark uh but i also think that with the the addition of rebel yell 100 that came out last year and by the way insider tip i lux row is dropping the the yell from rebel yell really yes okay yes. that was confirmed to me at the distillery uh over the weekend wow so okay it is it is becoming rebel bourbon huh so interesting take that take that as you may uh but with that in- the, the introduction of that product last year i think that that really gave larceny a run for its money um as a as a an everyday weeded sipper yeah um and and it's actually at a cheaper price point it's only about twenty dollars but you're also getting a younger product it's four years old instead of the six or eight years i I think they they say that larceny is about eight years old i i still think that uh larceny is one of the best values period on the market but especially for a weeder uh it's hard to it's hard to knock it i would say Mm mm-hmm so I'm assuming larceny was next up for you too to talk about. Uh, I wasn't say wouldn't say it was on the, next on the list, uh, yeah. but it was on there. Um, <laughs> I also let's hop back down. I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll out the just bottom shelf value. Oh heck yeah, value bourbon. So uh, JTS man. Brown. Oh yeah, the JTS bottle of the bond, Brown. right? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, that's. It's- it's so hard not to talk about these these bottom shelf bottle and bond products from Heaven Hill. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to to ignore them, you know. Yeah, I mean it is because they're just they they know what they're doing, man. <laughs> uh, and y- it's hard to find those those value bourbons that from other distilleries that really just hit the nail on the head with those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, there there is this conversation I think that people are still kind of having. I'm not crazy about the the idea of it, um, because I still think that it holds merit. Yeah. But about bottled and bond not being worth anything anymore, and for it just kind of being a, a meaningless name uh, that doesn't carry as much weight as it used to uh, in in the the whiskey world and the bourbon world. I just don't buy into that. I, I think that it's still 
got legs. I think that it still holds up as being one of the true testaments to, to quality in, in bourbon production and whiskey production. Yeah. And I think that it, you know, it, if, if we look at the celebration of heritage behind bourbon, I, I think that bottled and bond is it. I mean, I think that's really, you know, where I really, it sits. Yeah. I mean, and when you think of bottle and bond products, you constantly are getting good quality stuff that tastes like you're paying more for it. Mm-hmm. And, so, and that's not to be said on some other just uh, standard offerings. And and to be fair, I'm not saying that, you know, bottled and bond is 100% of the way my my favorite. Mm-hmm. Or, or even that they they always are knocking it out of the park. I mean, we talk all the time about how much we didn't like the Dickel bottled and bond. Yeah. From last year. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just because, yeah, just because it says bottled and bond doesn't mean that it's going to be superior quality, but it, it, it does at least guarantee craftsmanship. Yeah. Or attention and to detail. speaking of another bottled and bond, since that, you know, we're kind of there is uh, early times, mm. the early times bottle and bond. Oh man. That's, that's one of those where, and and this is directly related to the the recent news uh, that that's been acquired by Sazerac. Mm-hmm. What I just don't know what's going to happen with that product. You know, I. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's so good as it is, and I want it to maintain that consistent quality, but I don't. It, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to keep it up or if it's just going to tank. Uh, once it actually actually gets to <laughs> gets to Sazerac, uh-huh. sorry, words are words are hard after a couple glasses of bourbon. Apparently, <laughs> what was a uh, in a while? Next on your list? Oh, next on my list, I I, I hate to jump back to to wild turkey. I uh, Russell's Reserve ten year. That was one yeah. that uh, we you and I kind of discovered not discovered, discovered, you know, of course, but we, we did um, review it a while back and we went, this is something that I don't think a lot of people are talking about Mm -hmm. too much, at at least as being uh, a a great value. I mean, age stated about 25 to $30. Uh, It is 90 proof. I, I don't, I, I of course would like for it to be higher proof, but I still think that it it drinks great at uh, at ninety. Yeah, um, and that, like I said, I mean those, or like you said, the bottle that we had. I mean, that was a fine that we <laughs> we got yeah, to have. Yeah, uh, and that, I mean they're so available that why not? The, so the um. That was actually when we reviewed that. Yeah. That was the last episode that we did that you and I did in person. Oh, really? Yeah. That was also the uh the last episode that uh was recorded with anybody up in the, the old studio, which is now the nursery. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> which is crazy. That was uh yeah. that was back in March. It was right, right before right bef- shutdown and everything. Well, I think we had shutdown, but it wasn't, um, you know, there yet. Yeah, we we weren't um, we, we weren't self quarantining. Yes, at that mm-hmm. point, but like the the week after, we were. Yes, so that's that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, little little trip down memory lane. You know, five months later. Yeah. Uh, Jim Beam bonded. <laughs> oh, Jim Beam bonded's a great one. Yes. And that one's, I mean, what do you, is that $21 or something? Oh, not even, uh, not even, maybe, maybe it might be, it might be more like 20. Okay. I, I was off by a dollar. My bad. Yeah, well, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but, uh, Jim Beam bonded. 
Another I, great one. I keep throwing out these hundred proofers, not like unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's that's just kind of a good home for us, though. You know, just just being able to enjoy hundred proof bourbons. I, I mean, like, and even four rows of single barrel kind of falls under that that category. I think that's kind of pushing the top of the you know daily drinker in terms of affordability limit because i mean four roses yeah because it is like 35 40 dollars yeah and go looking back on my rare breed yeah it's probably probably more than what you want for a daily Mm -hmm. daily drinker so i'll i'll agree with you on let's hop that up to more of a it's available yeah exactly I feel like I'm just naming off bourbon, so like stop me if you know. Oh no no no, not at all. Um, yeah. I mean, we can we can kind of challenge each other too if we need to. Yeah yeah, this, I wouldn't <laughs> say this is this is just. I wouldn't say this. No, nah, I'm not even. Gonna, I was gonna say Jim Beam repeal batch. Um, See that 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 is one I would challenge you on because it's not as it, it it was like a limited release. I don't even. I don't really know the last time I saw it on the shelf. Yeah. Or if it's yeah, even and, still on the shelf. Yeah, that's why I, saw, I was like, I'm not even going to say it because it's not. It's more of a limited <laughs> thing. And I would even venture to say I wouldn't, wasn't, wouldn't be an everyday drinker for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, just with something that in passing I've had and I thought it was good, but uh, nothing special. We gave it a pretty good review. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. It just wasn't, you know, I don't think it would have be an everyday drinker for me (laughs) yeah i've got it i've got to agree with that yeah i can't really think of too many other uh daily drinker style bottles that are widely available Uh, (laughs) i maybe oh like evan williams bottle and bond that'd be another one i'd throw in there okay Uh, and and like evan williams single barrel i think is kind of pushing it maybe just a little bit but it's definitely it's definitely in that realm (laughs) i think um yeah but yeah it, it, it's funny like we kind of find ourselves sticking in the in, within like a couple of distilleries oddly enough mm-hmm. with this so let's let's try to push it a little farther than let's get out of the distilleries we were we've been talking about and maybe what's what's some others that you would say oh this just didn't think about it off the top of my head Ooh. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, but it, except that's exactly what you did, Curtis. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. There you go. Um, hmm. Oh, Buffalo Trace. Oh, yeah, oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buffalo Trace is a great one for a, for a daily drinker. Yeah, that's um, an easy one. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it had, a, it had a period where it was not as easy to get but it kind of found its way back recently with, with, with the, with availability, you know, still at 25, $26 a bottle, um, usually about eight years old, 90 proof. I, I, it's, it is one of those that I think I have started to overlook mm-hmm. or one that I'm not reaching for all the time, but is, I, you know, just kind of a, a, a solid standard. I wish that, even like Eagle Rare were still widely available. I still think that's a great bourbon. Oh, yeah. And and I don't think that it deserves the hunt that it has kind of incurred. I mean, people people just go bananas over it, which I I, know. Anyway, I I, I do love that bourbon. Here's one. So I... That you're probably going to be like, whoa, Kurt, why didn't you put this? So I've kind of fell off the, just the small batch 1792. I was, I was kind of wondering if that was going to come up with you or not. Yeah, I've, I fell off it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I still think it's good. I think it's a great introductory, in, introductory bourbon. Just because it's so sweet and has that banana taste yeah. that we've always talked about. Yeah. But uh, I, I think my palate has developed so much that it's kind of off off that it's a little too sweet for me too banana yeah and and mm. i i think that 
I, I think that Bullet is kind of in the same realm as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think that it's the top tier that I kind of thought it once was. Um, I like some of the other expressions from Bullet more than I do their their orange label. Yeah. But yeah, in in that same vein, there are definitely other products from 1792 that absolutely blow the small batch out of the water. I and mean, I think I, that's the problem with uh I think that not the problem. I think that's just what happened with me was I started having the sweet wheats, the full proofs, uh, <laughs> all of those, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I think it just is like, man, these are just so great compared the f- to the standard 1792. Yeah. You've had the 12 year, right? Yeah. I've had the 12 year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to make sure I was like, if you haven't had the 12 year, I need to definitely send you a sample of that. Yeah. I just got to send you samples in general. Man, I got too much. <laughs> I got too much stuff that you got to try that has been yeah. sitting around here that I feel bad. Well, I just you need to make a. Oh, dude, absolutely! Make need, a trip down. Need to make a trip down. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're actually going to IKEA this weekend. Sure. So. <laughs> oh well, let me know if you're up here. So, we'll get lunch or something. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> are you getting? Uh, buying uh nursery things yes we're getting baby furniture fun <laughs> i'm so excited yeah that's cool <laughs> ikea is a great place <laughs> i've actually never been before what yeah I've don't never, get I've, lost i well actually I do really, get lost you'll really, spend all day in there i really don't want to get lost with coronavirus <laughs> going around <laughs> no just i'm scared that i'll find the seedy underbelly of ohio in uh (laughs) you know in ikea yeah (laughs) i'm actually gonna pour a little bit of this russell's tenure Mm, i wish i had some sorry here pour me a little bit okay here you go go. yeah there we go thanks (laughs) ah zoom jokes ha uh knob creek would you put what's your thoughts on knob creek Knob, knob creek Knob Creek small batch, I think, would definitely fall under the the daily drinker. But I, I really like thirty dollars. I think is my cap for yeah, the, okay. the the daily drinkers. Mm-hmm. Um, once it kind of gets above that, uh, it becomes a little bit more gray air. And and you know, I the way that I think of daily drinkers, it's it's definitely more in the realm of like budget or affordable yeah. bottles, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just don't, I mean, I don't think that $30 is consistently the most affordable thing in the world. I think that it is I uh, widely acceptable in most regards. Uh, but I, I just think that that's kind of, pushing that, outside the the budget there that's that's about where i kind of draw the line i get that I would say so Which, have they always has knob creek always put the the age statement on there no it's it's coming on okay so i feel like they started putting it back on yeah they have they okay. have swan and I, I actually did an episode a few weeks back where we compared the old age stated the the non-age stated and then the new age stated okay um and i can't remember what came out on top it might have been the non-age stated um interesting but it's yeah it's it's an interesting little comparison to okay to do if you ever get the chance yeah i just Um, noticed i was like at the party source and i saw that the age state was back on for the first time and i was like huh interesting yeah um it was it was exciting the first time that I saw it with the, the age statement back on. I think it was at, uh, at total wine, mm-hmm. um, a, few, a couple months back, but yeah, it's cool. It's nice. It's good to see that it's back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, we've, t- we've all talked about it a little bit oh, yeah. on, we like to have that age statement, but it is interesting that the non age stated, uh, got the higher 
remarks on that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That kind of does it for me with like daily drinkers. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I want to move on to favorite widely available bottles. These are kind of what I'm considering non allocated. Okay. I would get, I, I would say, um, or, or ones that, you know, it, it, they, they might be a little bit higher shelf, a little bit higher priced, but you know, it, it's not going to cause you too much stress to go out and find. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually going to use <laughs> your first I- example, which is rare breed. Um, that's, that's one of my favorite uh, widely available, a little bit higher price products Mm-hmm. that has an amazing proof to it um you know usually exists around the like eight to 12 year old range um great blend i i think that it's it's one of the best values in bourbon that people can can pretty readily access yeah and uh, and you know you you kind of gave your thoughts on it earlier on <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think that you you would put that in this widely available, but not the everyday sipper just because of the price and everything. Yeah. Um. So I totally agree with that. And then I would kind of put, not kind of, I would put the Knob Creek single barrel in there mm-hmm. as well. Um. Again, a little bit higher price, round forty dollars, but the fact that it's age stated and a, a, a high proof. I, I think that it's one of the absolute best values in bourbon. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're, you're really not finding anything as easily accessible with that proof point on the market today, especially at $40. Yeah. I mean, any, anything over... 110 115 usually is going to get up into the the 50 60 dollar range at the least yeah i feel like so with products like rare breed and knob creek those are th- those are one of those where they're kind of they were kind of game changers once i understood how how good they were for uh, for what the market dictates mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. So I, I'm a, I'm definitely gonna throw Knob Creek single barrel in there. I would totally agree with that. Um, I was gonna throw in uh, Booker's. Booker's, that I, is. Yes. You gonna argue me on, on this one? N- no. I but guess yet no, but yes. But the the only part of the yes comes from the fact that. It's just gone up in price recently. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So it went from what the MSRP was seventy four ninety nine to eighty nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's getting like a little that. too high. So I, I, yeah, I just think it's a little much. I don't think the value is as there as it used to be. Again, this is not with the price. To, yeah, yeah, this is, and this is going back to a conversation that, or an episode that Swan and I did a couple weeks ago, where we were talking about just you know, how hard it is to, to value bourbon. Yeah. It's wild too, even with the MSRP, uh, that I've seen it for sitting at like 69, like, uh, like lower. I've seen it sitting there. Yeah. That's, I mean, I mean, that's usually in like Kroger. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> the Kroger wine and spirits or something, which usually yeah. has the best price anyway. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to find, you know, like I, I would challenge even total wine, uh, in that regard. I feel like, like Kroger wine and spirits usually has the best price on, on bourbon. Um, yeah. they, they've even had, you know, sales for Turkey 101 recently that have been like 17, 18 bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a steal of a deal. Oh, for, for sure. Is. And I, I know I know it's not your favorite, of course, but you know, if we're if we're purely talking about availability, price, and proof, I mean, Turkey One Hundred One 
at eighteen dollars a bottle. It's it's hard to it's hard to pass that up. I think at least from a curiosity standpoint, you know. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. if you've never had it before, uh, and want to kind of go out into the world and experiment. Yeah. A little bit. I think any of those other also that made my list were any of the newer kind of craft distilleries, uh, mm-hmm. new riff wilderness trail. I we talk just, about them a lot. We, I'm, yeah. you know, the, the horse has been, <laughs> we beat that <laughs> horse to death. death. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's just quality and, uh, exciting new things to come, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I think that even to some degree, we have to kind of acknowledge Elijah Craig barrel proof. I don't think that it's the, I, it, it, it's, it's tough because you don't see it as often, but I mean, it is widely distributed. Okay. I guess, but it's not widely available. I think that's, that's where I would challenge myself on it. Um, yeah. Because I mean, you, no, you can't just walk into the store like you used to be able to and see it on the shelf, pick it up and go on your merry way. But, you know, it is it is showing up more and more, I feel like, in, yeah, in more I've, markets. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I feel like it's more in, in the same vein as like a Henry McKenna tenure, the yeah. single barrel. Yeah, that's is like You just can't this should be widely available and be able to be found, but you just can't <laughs> just because <laughs> they've just been so good. Yeah. I oh, feel like man. those, both of those are asterisks a little bit. <laughs> I think, I think that's fair. What about Russell single barrel? Yeah. I think that's that, you know, e- even just the off the shelf product. I mean, it's one that, you know, it kind of in the same way that Knob Creek Single Barrel is, regardless of whether it's a pick, I, it's it's easy to get to. You know, it, it's something you can walk into just about any store and and pick up, much in the yeah. same way that uh, that Rare Breed is. Mm-hmm. So here's well. one: uh, you have Russell Single Barrel. <laughs> Compare it with Kentucky Spirit. Let's say we have to choose out of these two. What would you say? Mm. Mm, I think I would go Russell's. Okay. I don't, and it's not to say by any means that Kentucky spirit is bad. I think Kentucky spirit is one of the most underrated bourbons out there, especially wild Turkey products. It's definitely one of those that people overlook because it's between that Russell. I feel like it's between that Russell's that rare breed. And they said, well, if I'm not even between Russell's just, if they're deciding between Kentucky spirit or rare breed, I feel like a lot of people go, Oh, yeah. I'm just going to get the rare breed. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think nine times out of 10, I would probably go rare breed over Russell's. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, I still think that Russell single barrel is an absolutely solid product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I haven't, I honestly don't think, that I've had a bad Russell single barrel. I mean, uh, you know, pick or no pick. Yeah. I I can't say I've had too many of them. So sure. um, I think that's where I kind of, I'm not sure. We're just going to have to change that. Aren't we? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe at the last call tonight. (laughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe, but probably not because we're Let's, no, no, no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Last call on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Yeah. Anyway. Um honestly, I mean, like there there aren't a whole lot more that would fall under this category for me. Maybe four rows of small batch select, but even then, that's not a wide market. I, I, it's it's not hit, you know, all 50 states. It's not all around the world yep. just yet. Um, I think once, once it does become permanently widely accessible, then that would, I, I would be more confident and 
I just just happier with putting it on that list. Um, yeah. But I, I think I think it would be on there in some mm-hmm. capacity. Um, yeah, that's where mine was at. Um, I didn't have too many on on that list. Yeah. One of the one of the things that like I think we we are starting to see a little bit more frustration with is the Buffalo Trace side of things. You know, like Antique 107 was available for so long at such a great price. And now it's not available and it's at double the price. Mm-hmm. If you can't I- find it. I have never lived in that world. Uh, it's <laughs> never been available for me. It's just, I, <laughs> it's, I've That's lived fair. in that world. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it, and, and I'm not necessarily saying that I was able to access it myself at any point. It's just kind of the, like, I, I know that that was a thing that was a reality for a long time. Yeah. And you know, I I have seen it in stores in in recent times, but not for a price that I would want to pay and not in the capacity that we would like. Mhm. So and the amount of effort to find it. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Every yeah. time that I've seen it recently, I've stumbled uh, across it. Mhm. I mean, that that's been the only time that I've I've been able to find it. Yeah. So anyway, any closing thoughts on our widely available slash daily drinker slash things we like? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've covered the majority of it. I think so, too. I think we hit a, quite a few. Um, here's one that's super under the radar, but you can find it. And it's it's I guess it's not under the radar. It's just people don't pick it up. I would say enough it is Makers 46. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. And and I think that uh you know with the the maker's cast strength and the the 46 cast strength uh, mm-hmm. that's about to come out too. Um you know, I I think that's a a great addition uh to the lineup. Um that even sparked something in in my brain uh for some reason too. It, it just anything from from Old Forester. Oh like, yeah, there there mm-hmm. aren't a whole lot of products that I consider to be my favorite from them. Yeah, by any means, that old old Forester is just not really my cup of tea. Um, I do like the signature. I think the rye is a a phenomenal product. Uh, but you know, once you look at the whiskey row series, there is the nineteen twenty, uh, yeah. which is still very good. Um, it lost in a blind flight for me recently against i uh, small batch select russell single barrel and knob creek single barrel that was for uh the mash and drums uh to your anniversary live stream but okay. anyway i i still think it's a, a pretty solid product I, what like 55 dollars a bottle 115 proof mm-hmm. um you know i i think that it's i i don't know the exact distribution on it I guess, but I do know that it's, you know, pretty widely available. So I don't know. Yeah. But I think that's it. I can't, I can't really. <laughs> I think we covered our bases here. I think, I think we, we did got too. some, threw some good ones out there and uh, discussed, well, maybe that's not on there, but you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Kurt, that means that we have to move into a very rarely use segment on the show which we really don't have a have a name for but yeah. it's just kind of a I, i've been calling it mailbag i guess uh-huh or just something like that i'm cool I, with mailbag yeah sure mailbag's fine every now and then we get a, a little bit of correspondence from listeners of the show and uh, usually that comes in the form of an email to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com if you also want to correspond with the show you can send us questions comments anything uh, via social media usually at my bourbon pod and you can find all of those links down below in the description of this episode this was an email sent to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com 
And this is from Matthew Welch. So first off, hi, Matthew. Thank you so much for sending us. Uh, excuse me. He, he provided a pronunciation at the end of his email. Oh, nice. I totally, I totally <laughs> screwed it up. <laughs> That's great. Um, He's like, gosh, I sent it to you. Yeah, he did. Uh, his, it's pronounced Welgy. So, All right. Sorry about that, Matt. Well, gee, Barry. Well, gee. <laughs> he said, hey, guys. Hey, Matt. Uh, I live in Naperville, Illinois, Chicago sub- suburb, and I consider myself still new to bourbon and whiskey. Kudos on the last episode with the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Thank you, Matt. Mixed reviews across my casts, but I'll probably try it if I can find it. I really enjoy your show, and I look forward to the tastings, the news, and even the tips and bits. That's good because I've got some good tips and bits coming up here soon. Uh, I just purchased a store pick, Benny's, of uh, Ezra Brooks Distillers Collection. And I have to say, it's really good for only about $33. Lots of cherries, chocolate, vanilla, and tobacco in a really well-balanced way. I was wondering if you've tried it, and I'm curious about your opinions on charcoal mellowing. I'm not a purist when it comes to anything. I'll try it all. However, lately, I've been focusing on good value for the price. A 107 proof with that flavor profile at that price is a winner for me. Keep up the great work and stay safe. Matt Welge. Matt, first off, thank you so much for your email. We really do appreciate that. Uh, it's always good to hear it from listeners of the show. Once again, you can send your questions or comments uh, or just general correspondence to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com. And uh, to, to your question, I have not yet had uh, an Ezra Brooks single barrel distillers collection bottle. Um, I've seen it a couple of times. I haven't really been inclined to pick it up. At $33, though, I feel like that's a pretty good deal, especially at that proof point. I, I, from what I've seen, you know, it's been 107 plus. So I'd be on, I'd be on board with, uh, with trying that. Um, what about you, Kurt? Um, I mean, I definitely would be on board to try it. Ezra Brooks is a, a bottle that I, I don't often see or, or or pick up or anything like that i've never had many opportunities to try it so that's uh that's been my problem well i'm gonna pour some of this old ezra seven there you go here just to just to see how i think about how i think feel how i'm gonna react to it um uh <laughs> i'm gonna speak words to this <laughs> i'm gonna say something to say something yeah uh his question about charcoal mel- charcoal mellowing though I don't know. Like, I think it's fine if it helps the product, but I don't think that it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I think it kind of takes away from, from bourbon as a whole. I, and I, I just, I think that charcoal mellowing is fine. I just don't see it as being necessary. That's yeah, same here. And just to give a background on what charcoal mellowing is, would you give a kind of an, a little bit of an explanation on that? Yeah, so usually that's kind of something that's associated with the Lincoln County process, which is what um, Jack Daniels goes through. I think really all Tennessee whiskeys uh, legally have to go through as well. So the, the product comes out of the barrel and then it's filtered through charcoal um to remove some of the you know what what they would call i guess harsher notes um impurities or something yeah maybe. yeah something like that and what what people usually don't understand is that bourbon goes through filtering of you know any capacity before it actually hits your bottle or hits your glass you know and that's usually just to remove chunks of oak or, or wood or residue or, or whatever. Um, so it looks better. Yeah. And I guess really tastes better, but in general, I mean, I, I just, I think charcoal mellowing is fine. I don't really have an, an opinion on it one way or another. It's just, I think I would rather <clears throat> stick with a non Lincoln County process uh, mm-hmm. for my for my bourbon. I think 
Yeah, I think you just get some more of those oils and more of uh, more of those kind of straight from the barrel kind of aspect to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, again, thank you, Matt Welgie, for sending us an email. And, uh, yeah, that does it for this week's mailbag, I guess. Still don't think we have an actual title for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that segment yeah <laughs> but it's all good but you know we do have a segment title for is the segment that comes next which is tips and bits <laughs> yeah that's Where true we, rec- we recommend some things for you people to go and check out i am very excited about my tips and or bits this week but i'm gonna let you go first kurt all right um okay my okay my tips right. and or bits uh, is going to be a book called The Big Nine. Um, I don't know by that book. Amy Webb. Uh, okay. It really goes about the into the detail of um, like how these big companies like Google and uh, Apple oh, and okay. all of them are just like using data and using uh, artificial intelligence. So I'm not finished with the book yet, but it's been pretty good. Uh, so I, I definitely am going to recommend that one. It's kind of relevant in the time of, you know, ever changing artificial sure. intelligence sure. and how companies are using data and growing bigger, that kind of thing. So has it made you more scared about how companies are listening in to, uh, to your daily life? I wouldn't say listening in. I think it's just the the scale of what they are becoming. Sure, sure. Um, that makes sense. I think that's kind of where more where it's like, oh wow, th- there is a lot that they have there. Yeah, um, and and what that kind of technology can do. Yeah, yeah. I I. This is one of those weird things where. Like, I, I don't want to get too tinfoil hatty mm-hmm. on it, but it's hard to ignore when you've never been served an ad before, and then you talk about a product, and then all of a sudden it shows up on your Facebook feed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and and it's I've, really I've heard that so many that. times, and it's like, what's happening here? <laughs> um, it's so really I, unsettling. I totally agree. Um, yeah. I think in in the future there will definitely be. Uh, I mean, I don't think I know that there this will happen. Is that there will be you know certain regulations and things that they'll have to go through. I agree. To, yeah. To, to do some of this stuff, um, it's just kind of the wild, wild west right now. Oh, and, it absolutely um, is. Yeah, it absolutely and, is. And it's intimidating, but it's encouraging too, just because I mean that technology will help incredibly a lot with um 5g and artificial intelligence and yeah um, you know not a lot of people think just technology but you're also talking health like you know a doctor will be able to perform surgery on somebody 100 200 miles away yeah like they don't have to be there um so it'll save a bunch of lives it'll do all that stuff however you're also sacrificing some of those you know, yeah. those, I, I, I guess, uh, privacy kind of stuff. It's, it's a, it's a double edged sword. Yeah. It's a, it's a big topic, but, uh, yeah. the big nine by Amy Webb, it's a, it's a good book. So, okay. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. <sighs> What's yours? I want to, I, I, I want to talk about this guy so much because I have been so oblivious to his existence over the past few years. But as soon as I started paying attention to him, I've, I've been obsessed and it's a musician from England. His name's Jacob Collier. He is, he's, he's basically a modern day Mozart in terms of being a musical prodigy and just just having this knack 
for musical creation that has really not been seen in a long time. And he, he, he does these arrangements. L- look him up on, on YouTube. He has uh, several different covers um, where he just shows his, his musical prowess, his, his arrangement capability um, that just, it, it makes my brain hurt a little bit. Like he's younger than I am and he's a far better musician than I will ever be. But he also is a self-proclaimed autodidact, which means that he has not learned from a particular master or from somebody who has shown him how to do certain things. So it would basically be like if you were a carpenter, but you watched somebody do it, or you just kind of learned it on your own. It's it it's it's kind of hard to to explain this more nebulous concept of learning. Um, but he he is, I would say, self taught. I think self taught is really the 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 best way to describe it. Um, but his his ability to arrange music and arrange layers and make it just it just sounds it sounds so perfect it sounds so genuine and and good i guess like i don't even i don't even have the right words to describe it because he's so unique in what he does and it's so just freaking good man i'll I'll try to put a link in the description uh, of the episode so that people can go listen to a little bit of what he does um he set out to put out a four volume album essentially a couple years ago and uh volume three i think is coming out this week i if if i'm remembering correctly there's been a few singles that have come off of it 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 just I could go on and on about how much I like this guy and how good I think his music is, but um, it, it's it's good. It, it's, he, he's just he's just a phenomenal musician. Um, and if if you've heard him before, please let me know. I want to talk about him more, and I want to try to horn horn. No, I want to. What am I trying hone. to say? Hone. Thank you. Is that the word? I think it is. I want to try to hone in on what it is that I love so much about him and and what he produces. Yeah, um, that's definitely the word. Hone that in. is that is one hundred percent the. But that's exciting. I de- I'll definitely look up John Collier. Yeah, Jacob. Jacob Collier. Jacob Collier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it for my tips and bits, and I guess yours as well, Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that also does it for another episode of this is my bourbon podcast. That is definitely a looser episode, and it it gives me all of the nostalgia of uh, older older episodes as well, where we were just kind of like, "What are we doing? We're having fun. It's a conversation. Yay. We're talking bourbon. Yeah, we're talking bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, what kind of bourbon are you like? I like bourbon. Let's talk about the bourbon together. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> With well, lower quality you. audio. Oh my gosh! Absolutely, <laughs> with rock uh, a rock band microphone. Yep. Mm, yeah, that was something. Beautiful. Anyway, thank you all so much for listening to episode 139 of the show. Curtis, where can people find you on social media? Uh, on Twitter, you can find me at Kurt Con, Kurt underscore Con fifteen, and on Instagram, Kurt Con. And you can find me personally at P Raider 1492 on all social media channels. You can find the show itself at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can leave us a five-star rating and review on the iTunes podcast app. We've seen some ratings pop up here over the past week, but no reviews. So if you leave a review of the show on any podcast app, really, I, I, I can see them. I, I, I'll read it out on the show. And you know what? 
positive or negative. We'll read out the negative ones too, because that would be that would be fun, right? Maybe. Yeah, it would be something. Yeah, unless it's like <laughs> genuinely like brutal and <laughs> goes to the core of our being. <laughs> It hurts. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but we'll still read it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll still we'll still read it. You can leave us uh, questions, comments, correspondence, anything at thisismyburbanshop at gmail dot com. You can also find all of our apparel and merchandise at the uh, bourbonshop dot dot com. I am actually wearing my brand new this is my bourbon podcast shirt as we are recording. I have a mask on the way with the podcast logo on it. Nice. And I have a great new phone case with the podcast logo on it as well. Uh, it's not just that. You can find all sorts of apparel, merchandise, items, accessories uh, over at bourbonshop.threadless.com. Uh, it's a really great way to support the show as well. If you are not able to commit to something monthly like Patreon, um, we get 100% of the profit from that as well. That goes right into uh, our pockets. Uh, it's basically eliminating all of the overhead uh, by using something like Patreon, or excuse me, like Threadless. And uh, I, I know that there have been some folks who have been wanting us to put out glassware uh, recently. So we we will talk about that more coming up. Um, I definitely want to put out some Glen Cairns, maybe some rocks glasses, uh, and and we'll we'll work on getting those out. But in the meantime, if you want to show your support of the show. It's a uh, threadless.com and just search for bourbon shop or bourbon shop .com, Something like that. I don't know. You can also become a part of our Facebook group. If you just head to facebook.com and search for this is my bourbon group. There's a couple questions to uh, get you in there. And uh, it's always fun. That's where we ask uh, folks to leave us questions for our pregame chats over on Patreon. And that is where you can find all of our bonus content at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month at $5 a month. You actually get all of that bonus content like the pregame chats you also get the uh the last call which i i think curtis and i are gonna record here in a minute if we can we can keep it together for for long enough i don't know man um struggling <laughs> no not struggling at all i'm i'm riding the high horse is that what i meant i don't know maybe um but you also get bonus episodes you get access to hangouts uh, some exclusive live streams. You get some uh, polls, conversations that are exclusive only to Patreon. Uh, once again, that's patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. But we also need to thank a patron of the show. Uh, as we have been doing over the past few weeks, this week, we're going to send a huge shout out and thank you to Brian Brennicky, who is at the $20 a month tier. Uh, and has been a patron of the show since August of 2018. Brian, thank you so much, as always. You and your wonderful wife, Tammy, are a huge supporter of the show. And we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for everything that you do for us and all the support that you have given us over the years. And uh, if you would like a shout out, if you would like some of that bonus content, once again, patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. And I think, Kurt, that does it for this week. Next week, as I said earlier on in the episode, Jack Maxwell of Booze Traveler is going to be joining me. We're going to have a great conversation about all things bourbon and I guess all things booze. Chef's kiss from, from Kurt. <laughs> but until the Booze Traveler joins us next week, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. And this is my bourbon podcast. Bourbon podcast.